Okay, welcome back. So, I have the solution to the brake problem that uh, I was having in the last video. Um, got that sorted fairly quickly. Um, and hands up, massive error on my part. Pretty much just me being a dick. Um, I mean, it was handy. There was actually air trapped in the um, in the banjo, kind of uh, where the banjo bits go into the brake switch. Um, so it's been a useful kind of learning experience in that point that I was able to bleed a bit more air out and the brakes are rock hard now. Um, but um, I'll show you where I went wrong and what it was causing that. Um, so we'll head over to the brake pedal. So just crack open the banjo bolt, um, either that one or that one, and um, I was able to pump the brake lever until I was just, just getting fluid coming out and then nip them up quickly. Um, and there, that... Uh, did get a fair bit of uh, um, air out of the system um, on that as well, which was kind of handy. Um, so possibly that's like a little, so you can get a little bit of an airlock possibly in there. But I'm still not completely happy with the um, the feel of the, the the brake lever. It just didn't feel quite right. Um, hard to explain. And um, it was down. This is where I cocked up. See. Just there, or maybe I'll come at it at this angle. There we go, this this spring here, the return spring, so when you push the brake lever down, springs back. Um, there's like a little bend in it, just here. Uh, and I'd actually, when I was putting these back on, um, that must have moved, and the, it was stopping there. So although the brake pedal was returning back, it, it wasn't doing the correct action if you get what I mean. Um, it needed that moving back round to that point um, and then I've got the proper action on the brake now and because um, we did it the other way that was just pushing it down enough to um, keep the brake switch on which is why when we put the uh, the leads up to it it was beeping got to get in continuity just because where that spring was meant that the brake pedal was always kind of about there rather than really fully releasing so yeah I mean yeah just as just an error on my part really so absolutely nothing to do with the electrics and as we can see if I just there we go just turn the uh, the torch off the camera there because that was glaring back but power on running light front brake and then rear awesome so that's all sorted so we're happy days again so that was a quick and easy fix didn't need a new brake switch or anything like that and uh, as a bonus got even better brakes well, on the that's back sorted now out. Uh, this weekend is also going to be devoted to a bit of bracketry a bit more bracketry uh, I want to get um, a little bracket in the crankcase breather filter a little small um, little filter that uh, you need in place when you've removed the breathe like the air box because um, normally when the you get the kind of pulse of air in and out of the, the crankcase that just feeds into your air box um, somewhere usually underneath your air box you've got like a little catch tube and that just catches any it, there's always a fine misting of oil that will come out um, and that that kind of catches it obviously you can't just leave that open or you wouldn't want to leave it open because it sucks in as well you need to have a filter in place so we have the crankcase filter um, so I want to try and I'm going to have to extend the tubing um, and also I want it kind of quite fairly high up and out of the way. You do get a bit of misting occasionally um, so I'm going to try and figure out where I can safely secure that out of the way um, and I don't really just want to just cable tie or something I want it to look kind of quite nice. Um, front mud guard, going to have a little look at that see if we can do something with that. Um, I've been skip raiding at work again and got some nice bits of alley. Um, rear mud guard mounting. Um, I don't just want to have bolts going through those ends of the frame rails and just expose, but I want to try and do a nice, something fairly sturdy and nice at the back end of that. Um, but uh, yeah, well, let's just crack on. There's enough to be getting on with. So um, I think we will begin with the crankcase crank breather. 
bracket. So a little rummage through the old scrap metal bits, and I've got uh, some of these kind of. Um, these are thrown out from work. They're like blanking plates that we use on some of the machines. Um, it's a bit mangled, but um, yeah, quite thin aluminium. But um, the plan is, I need to make a little bracket um, f to hold the uh, crankcase breather. I've uh, I've got some much longer tubing, as you can see. Um, that goes boom, down into there, and I just want to. Ideally, I'd like to mount it a bit higher than the uh, than the carbs. Um, try and minimise the amount of uh, air, um, oil that's kind of misted out through here. It's mainly the sucks in, but um, yeah, I have heard that um, the higher higher up it is, the less oil you have. I know on gens we have it quite low down, and it does tend to sometimes can just mist out a bit of oil on the bottom here. So I was just looking around for a. I mean, the, this uni filter comes with a handy little hole on the side of it to make mounting easier um, and I was looking around for a place to mount it and I'm thinking I was going to come off here or maybe come off there and do a little L shaped bracket and da 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 but I thought actually that bit of uh, metal off there I can just maybe cut out this shape bolt it on top of the carb top and then it'll bring it to about here and that'll be sitting there and then I've got no bends or anything in it it's just nicely sort of sitting there. Well, we'll give it a go anyway, have a little play around with it. I probably won't like it and remake it, but uh, right, so the first here we go. Taking it, um, they've got these kind of captive nuts on the end, so I've just drilled them out, um, and I've just pretty much used those holes as my guidelines for where I want them. So that'll be the one carb top, then the carb head here, the other carb bolt will be about there, and that there. So I've also just notched uh, with the file, so when that bolts on there, oops, let me do this with one hand. Should have really got the stand. Actually, yeah, that will make it easier to see. And that sits there perfectly like that, nice and snug. A bit of cutting and sanding. A bit more, a uh, bit more sanding. Get the shape. Sure must be there. Right, so pretty. Pretty much there, I think. Um, I just kept going up with um, aerosol cans with a bit of sandpaper wrapped around them. Just gradually kept filing that out until uh, we got a nice fit. So let's take it over to the bike. Not quite a nice fit, I think. Not too bad. Right, stick it on here and uh, see how it all looks. Okay, might have to have a little bit of a compromise. Um, the plan was was to have it flipped over and on that side and sitting in this little recess here but once it's all bolted down I haven't actually got the clearance around this bolt here and getting the pipe work up here I'm slightly slightly concerned about the choke moving underneath it um, obviously it doesn't clear it on this side um, but I don't know if I'm I mean it's going to so a bit of pipe work up there. I can, I can feel in my gut I'm not overly happy with it on the, this side, on the outside. I'm wondering if I put a bend in that and bring it up, whether that will give me enough clearance inside there. I just think it would just be a lot cleaner inside there. Well, I've got it to sit there. Um, I'm not 100%. I mean, I've got a clear... This bolt here, that bolt there, um, I do definitely prefer it tucked in just under the tank there. I'm wondering if I can, uh, if I can still just tweak this design a little bit. There we go, so that's all in, buttoned up together, new pipe working dark down there but um, yeah I'm much happier with that I think that sits nicely I like the way it kind of matches the pod, uh, air filters so yeah sorted that'll do the job uh, it's nice and solid actually it's not going anywhere even though there's zero weight to it at all but um, I think it just looks a bit neater and nicer and um, hopefully it won't get as much blowout uh, but we'll see right so on to the mud guard um, 
This is the uh, standard mud guard on the America, huge, great, big, heavy lump of stuff, um, which I don't want to use. Um, also, the shape is quite square. You've got a very large mud guard that sits on the front, so none of that will do. So I've worked out. Um, I want it to sit much lower and closer to the profile of the tire. So a little bit of uh, cereal packet, and that's worked just to, to bend over to get a rough idea of the distance I need. Um, on these points to get that shape down to there from the mounting points and how close I wanted to have it to the tyre um, and so using the old good old bits of scrap alley which I've got a, another stack of from the skip at work um, marked it out um, so obviously they've got these be quite nice if they didn't have these holes in them because I could just have to do one cut down and make the strip but they've got the holes which I don't want so I'm going to have to just lose that on the outside so I have to cut more straight lines than I want to really so I'll be losing that area and that area and that should give me the the raw band that I need to mount which I think is going to be this mud guard this is the one off the Bonneville, my other Bonneville I don't think the hardtail is going to run a front mud guard um, not sure yet, but um, I quite like the look of this one on here <laughs> for all the good it'll do. Um, it'll offer a little bit of splash protection, I suppose. But um, it's quite bobbed, quite small. Um, it's quite aggressive looking, I think, in my opinion, anyway. So we'll have a little play with that and um, see how we get on. So just using a bit of sacrificial uh, plate. Um, just because I can get, I know I've got like a, I've done this before when I'm using the angle grinder just to cut along there, I can just bump up against that and I tend to myself get a straighter cut than if I was going to freehand it and uh, try and do it. So uh, hopefully that will give me a reasonably straight cut that side and that side. There we go, all chopped. Uh, so, pretty darn straight. I'm happy enough with that. Um, so, considering it's all by hand. Um, so, all I've got to do now <laughs> is the stuff where it gets really difficult. I've got to try and get a nice, even bend in it around something, possibly the tyre. Um, and then um, make sure I mark up my holes correctly and get everything spot on. And then see if it's going to accept the mudguard. But, um, there you go. It's all a bit fun. Right then, so uh, I was trying to look for something to uh, bend it round um, and uh, just so happens that the uh, lamppost just outside my street was uh, spot on. So um, that's had a, a bend round the lamppost to get the radius pretty much there. Might do a little bit of tapping and banging just to get it sitting spot on, but it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty much there. Maybe just need to bring that's gone a little bit pointy there, but um, to be honest, a little bit of finessing. That's going to sit on there pretty nicely, I think. Um, yeah, just kind of doing. Yeah, I think that's kind of adequately low. Um, possibly, you know, front end could have been a bit lower, but then I'm working with the radiuses and stuff I've got on the, the old Bonneville mud guard. But, um, yeah, I think we're there. Right then, so whilst we're doing a few sort of finishing jobs, tidying up and stuff, I need to do something about the mirrors. Um, I didn't really need to. I had on there before just like some, probably the cheapest bar mirrors I could find on eBay. There's plastic ones, they're like four quid or something like that for a set. Um, do the job absolutely fine. They were actually a very, quite a good view behind you off the handlebars. Um, they're all right, but... Um, as I think I might have mentioned before, I'd got ages ago when I was 
before the bonnet was going to get hard tailed um, I've got some of these bar end mirrors which are pretty nice um, and they um, they were going to go on that and they were going to go on the, the hard tail actually to be honest um, I've got some nice my friend made up some stainless steel kind of adapters that fit on there so you, you don't end up just clamping it onto a bar end or anything it just it looks a little bit more finished and nice um, but um, yeah as I think I said before the only it's a silly little thing but the issue I have the new Triumph Bobber um, has round bar end mirrors on it like this um, and I kind of don't want them on my hardtail now because um, I want it to look a bit different you know um, I mean I know it's probably a little bit petty on my part but um, yeah I think it's just it's just something di different I want to do so I'm not letting a nice pair of mirrors like this go to waste they're gonna look lovely on the America I hope so um, I need to fix those on but I've got a couple of little issues not issues really but um, little uh, problem solving things I need to do before I can stick them on so I'll show you what I mean right then so the setup I basically had before, right, a few variables I've got to remember. So I had these mirrors on, and they just come with these very simple plastic, um, that's like an M, probably an M6 bolt in there. Um, and um, because they're so light, they're next to nothing, that, that's fine, you know. They're not the sturdiest, but then there's no weight or anything to them really either. And at four quid, if one was to... Uh, drop off and go down the road you wouldn't lose too much sleep over it um, these ones are, are a, not an awful lot heavier actually um, but they are a bit heavier they're metal they're obviously you know I just want to secure them onto the bike um, a little bit more uh, rigidly if you like um, so they were going to go on the Bonneville with these I just got some long M8 bolts and um, I think these these kind of bar end, um, you know, the handlebar slugs, if you want to call it, um, they were off the DRZ. And they were on the the hand shields, um, and just I just had to just I chopped off like the end there. It was kind of like a it looked a bit more like that on the end there. Um, chopped that off so it would just butt up against that, and that would cleanly fit in. Da -de -da -de -da, which is fine. But the only trouble is the Bonneville, my Bonneville is uh, uh, 7 8 bars um, which this fits in quite nicely um, obviously the America are 1 inch bars they fit in the 1 inch bars but they are not going to be beef enough by any stretch of the imagination to hold those bad boys in so I want to do something a bit more beefy with it so um, I went to the local DIY shop and bought some M8 uh, anchor bolts um, so these are I mean, like they're tents these really they're very cheap um, but you've just got a M8 bolt in there and it essentially works exactly the same way as the uh, the bar ends uh, mirrors that you know as you tighten in this collar this tapered collar in here goes in there flares out um, these parts and they grip on the inside of the handlebar and then you've got a really insanely secure bolt there you could swing off it um, so you know they're very cheap in a very easy way of installing things into your handlebar um, the only thing I want to do is um, it might be a touch overkill but the diameter of this sorry yeah, right it the diameter um, I think of the inside of the bars is something like 17 mil um, this is not <laughs> um, it is so 13.67 yeah so 40 mil for all intents and purposes we'll call it um so i think that will probably when that flares out that'll probably hold but if you imagine the part that's going to flare out so if this is the, the handlebar my this is the side cut view of the handlebar 
and that feeds in. As that pulls in, up to that wash there is going to flare out. That's going to leave you with a bit of a gap around this front section, which potentially could rattle around. It might not. I, I suspect it will probably hold quite well. But um, I think just as a preventative, I've just got a bit of rubber strap I found. Um, I suppose you could use an inner tube. Um, well, I don't know, whatever it is. I'm just going to cut. In fact, the width is just bang on right there, actually. That's handy. I'm just going to cut a section of sleeve in there. Push that in. That will take up. that. That's uh, the right... Uh, thickness to take up the, the gap in the handlebar and um, a bit of rubber vibration mount, I don't know, who knows, but it's just going to make it all a bit more secure, can't hurt can it, so um, let's pop it so in. There we handlebar. go, that's it in, so we've got uh, the handlebar, the rubber sleeving and that now I've tightened that down with the wrench uh, with the bolt that came with it and that's flared that out and that is, that really is not going anywhere, in fact let me get a bolt and just uh, put it in and I'll show not you. Not moving at all. That is, I mean, obviously there's where the bolt's not tight, but um, that really is. I'm going to pull the bike over before uh, that comes out. So, um, yeah, let's uh, get the bar in mirror, sling it on. There we go. On. Um, I've favoured the underslung option. Uh, I think that's just a little bit more stealthy than having them pop up. But, um, yeah, we'll see how they get on. All very easy and rock hard. Uh, they're not going anywhere. Uh, the only thing I did do was just um, put a single washer in between this and the handlebar, so it's just it's a slightly smaller diameter, just slightly than the actual bar itself. So that means it just pushes that away and stops the um, throttle from you know potentially snagging on there because of course you've got a little bit of movement on the throttle. Um, so that's just as an extra precaution. But otherwise. Um, Good, good. Right then, so I've just also just um, redone the mounting uh, point on the tank. Uh, raised the tank up a little bit, not a massive amount. Um, and it's just, that's just, I think it was an exhaust, no, it was a footrest um, bush metal one. Um, and then I've put a, like a rubber sleeve over it just to, so it's rubbered each side there. So there's no sort of metal on me metal kind of thing. Um, but it's all very solid, so. Yeah, a little thing just to get the tank in a slightly better position. But uh, right, yeah. so the rear mud guard. I'm starting to have another play around with this a bit more, um, and I'm just not overly happy at the moment with. It's mainly the mounting points there at the, at the end. There's a bit of a gap between where the frame rails finish and that. Um, the actual mould here, because that's not normally. If that was going straight on a standard like Speedmaster or America, you'd have the big frame rails that cover it. So it's a, they're a bit, they're not, you know, where it's released out of the mould. It's not completely flat and flush, so it's quite hard to put some spaces in because they're all cockeyed. Um, I don't just want to see sort of a centimetre of thread. Um, that just looks shit. Um, also, want to have a bit more of a sturdier mounting point there and there and there and there so I'm kind of just messing around with ideas I've sanded a bit back here um, which is why it's all dusty again I have to respray it um, just trying to work out I might fill this gap because it actually recesses in but I don't need that that could stay flush I might build that up with some fiberglass um, I mean you don't see any of it but it'll just hopefully if I can make that nice and flat then I'll just need one thin spacer which I've probably got um, one of these should fit just nicely to take the difference up. Um, I'd quite, I'm now starting to think I'd quite like because this has been on and off a few times and it's a pain getting your hand under there to get a bolt behind it. Um, so I've got hunting through the yeah, right, here we go through the toolbox. I've got these little sort of M8 captive inserts, threaded inserts. Um, I'm just wondering if I can pop them in there
so it looked like that. Um, and then I could just fiberglass and resin the back of that in um, to hold it in place. Build that up enough that possibly might do it. So, yeah, I'm just working out little ideas here to make the mud guard look nice, mount nicely and easily. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to just keep thinking on that. Um, I'm, I think I'm running out of time a little bit today, but um, yeah, that's. Okay, so they're, um, I mean, they were a tight fit if you push them in anyway, but um, I've just made up some resin and um, coated them in it, and then just kind of underneath that top lip, just got it all around there, so it's just sitting there level now. So hopefully that will provide a bit of stability there. And then on this other side, when that's dry, I'm going to just build up around there with um, fiberglass and just kind of, yeah have those completely locked in so um, so yeah so they should be kinda just make life easier putting I've only got to put the bolts through and in then I've okay, got no idea if it's gonna work but we'll give it a go get mixing in there I've cut up a load of oh, there we go uh, and this is this is actual actually uh, where's the camera there we go baffle packing material it's a much it's a much finer glass fiber than the bigger mat that I've got um, so maybe that will be a little easier to um, manipulate so Okay, there we go. Looks a little bit like a dog's dinner at the moment because it's all laid up and wet, but um, they're pretty well buried in those little captive nuts now. Um, obviously, I'll put some bolts through just to stop any resin or anything uh, going down and um, clogging up my threads. But I'm um, just going to leave that to dry now, go off, and um, see how the mud guard's doing in the oven. That's done. Um, I'm going to have to leave it there. I haven't actually got. Um, uh, I was thinking about I might tap those holes um, to screw into, but um, I haven't bothered. I'm, I'm just going to put, there's enough room to put a nut underneath it. So um, I'm going to have to grab some nuts <laughs> from work tomorrow. Um, so, because um, I haven't got any M6, I think they're M6s. Um, so I have to wait until the next video to, uh, to show that one with the mudguard on and installed. So that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, we're going to wrap it up now. Um, so, very close, almost there. We're going to see how that mud guard works out. Um, but yeah, it's when you kind of get that mud guard finished. Um, just do the connector block for the rear indicators and the brake light. Put the uh, uh, front mud guard on. Um, got to sort out what I'm going to do with the seat. But um, yeah, we're pretty much there. We're almost ready for a test ride. Um, it would be pretty cool if next weekend I can get a test ride in. Um, so, fingers crossed, but thanks for watching, take it easy, see you next time.